Hi everyone, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, mask seals, so how to get a good mask seal in your CPAP mask when you're sleeping. Um, obviously a CPAP mask seal is very important, right? And if there are leaks in the mask, then you're not getting that prescribed pressure. You know, all the pressure is being leaked out the side or whatever, and you're not gonna have as good of a sleep. Uh, in addition to that, um, having a bad mask seal uh, creates wind and stuff blowing in your face, blowing into your eyes, creating dry eyes, which is not a fun thing to have. And also um, having a bad mask seal is gonna be noisy and annoying and again, not a fun thing. So how do we get a good mask seal? The first thing we wanna look at is your mask itself. So here we have a Dreamwear nasal uh, cradle mask here. Very good mask, one of my top favorite masks. All CPAP masks are good for different people. Different masks, different people, and different face shapes, um, different nose shapes, and different nose rigidities. I don't think this is talked about enough. A lot of people have very rigid noses with a lot of cartilage in it. I have a very squishy nose. So these different noses and different face shapes can change how well a mask fits, right? And so having a cradle for me, because I have a very squishy nose, kind of forms to my nose quite well, whereas other people might need a mask with pillows. So if this is your first time using CPAP therapy, if you're if this is like your first mask you've ever tried or something like that, try changing a mask, try seeing if a different mask leaks less, you know, that could definitely be a, a big, big factor on your mask leaks. Now, if you use CPAP therapy for a while and you have a favorite mask and you just wanna enhance that and have a better seal, the next step is to look into your pressure, right? A higher pressure is going to have a higher likelihood of your mask leaking. Think about the most pressure you get, like you got a leaf blower through here, right? Obviously you have a leaf blower through here, this thing's gonna be like blown all over the place and you're gonna have a huge leak because it has high pressure. If you have lower pressure, it's not gonna have it. So if you're on a higher pressure, you might wanna see if you have an opportunity to decrease that. So how do you decrease your CPAP pressure? Well, you would have to go into your machine, you have to go into the, uh, the clinical settings. Now, a clinical settings is supposed to be done by your physician or directed by your physician, but we will pretend that uh, they've given you the okay and I'll show you how to access it. All right, so we have uh, a, uh, AirSense 11 uh, by Resmed here, just FYI. It's connected to the climb line tubing. We have a Go Battery CPAP. Go Battery is just like the smallest travel CPAP battery you can get, so it's all charged up. Easier for these videos. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Uh, here we have the My Options. You can see ramp time, climate control, tube temperature, etc., etc. So I'm gonna go home here. And if we take our two fingers and put them both on these two menu buttons, it will turn white like that. And we're gonna go into settings. Okay, I hope you can kind of see that a little bit better. So we have uh, the mode here. This is CPAP. Okay, we have auto, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna keep it at CPAP. And say you're using CPAP, then we're gonna click set pressure. And now we can change the pressure. Now this should be prescribed by a professional, but uh, say you have a prescribed pressure of a 10, you might want to bump that down to 11 and you know see maybe you leak less and an eight, maybe you leak less. So, that's how you change it on this device here. And then if you have um, auto, let's click auto. Then we got a pressure range. So select min pressure. Um, let's say we have a four and then our max pressure, we have a 20. So say that's what you're working with. Maybe, you know, bump this down to an 18. Sorry, let's see here. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Select. Just like that. So now it's four to 18. Okay, and so that's how you change the pressure. You can decrease the pressure a little bit. I'll exit that, and there we go. Now decreasing the pressure right on your machine is just one, you know, one step of this method, right? Uh, we also have to look to make sure that just because you decrease the pressure, you know, you don't wanna ruin your sleep apnea therapy, right? So you wanna look into whatever app you're using to track your sleep. Uh, whether it's the ResMed app or the Philips app or whatever app you're using. And you wanna look at your AHI, which is your apnea hypopnea index, okay? And so, actually, I'll just put it here, um, what, what a chart will look like. So generally, zero to five is your range of having normal sleep, no sleep apnea. Um, five to 15 is your mild sleep apnea. Higher than that, uh, you're getting to moderate and severe sleep apnea, right? So 
right now with your current pressure, if your pressure is a 10 on a CPAP, so continuous pressure of 10, and you're having a zero or a one, two, three, four, five in the AHI index, you know that you can probably decrease that pressure by one and then track your sleep for a month and see, are you still at a five? Are you still below a five? And if so, you can probably decrease that pressure down to an eight or whatever. And you want to have the lowest pressure while still having very effective sleep apnea. So anything below five, honestly, anything below six is pretty good. So if you can decrease the amount of leaks you have by decreasing pressure and still have effective sleep apnea uh, therapy, and you can see that by your AHI, then you know that uh, it's working for you and you have a best case scenario. Now the next thing is cleaning and maintaining your equipment. If you find that over time you're getting more and more leaks, you might not see it visually, but your oils and your sweat and stuff can wear out the cushions, wear out the pillows and whatever in your mask and stretch it out a little bit. And if that starts stretching it out, not just your, your oils and stuff, but just wear and tear, wearing it every day, um, that stretching out can easily create a leak. And it doesn't take much for the silicone to stretch a little bit for you to really start noticing those leaks and really start noticing uh, that your seal's just not like it used to be. And in that case, replacing your cushions um, is very important and you should be doing that uh, you know, every three months, every six months, um, depending on, you know, depending on all sorts of factors, right? Depending on how well you're cleaning it and all that stuff, how well you're maintaining it. I have a video uh, I'll put in the comments or the description on how often you should replace your stuff. So check that out. But if you're finding that you had great uh, seals with your mask like six months ago and you're starting to have some leaks now, cleaning, maintaining, and replacing your mask or cushions uh, could help with that seal leakage. The next thing I want to talk about is your placement of the tube and the placement of the machine. So if your machine's kind of in an area where you're finding a lot of weight on your face. So let's put this back together here. So say you're sleeping and this is in your mask and you're, and you're finding that this weight is kind of like hanging on the end of your bed and it's just like kind of like uh, maybe sometimes it gets jammed between your bed and your nightstand or something and you pull and, you, and that creates a leak and you don't notice right away. Stuff like that. Um, make sure that the placement of your tube, of your mask, on, on yourself obviously, and the machine is in a good way so that it's not getting tangled at all. One option you can have is having a tube hook at the top of your bed. It can be a tube hook or it can just be a, any coat hook or whatever, as long as it's significantly big enough to hold the tube and have it slide e easily. Uh, have that above your bed and so the weight of the tube uh, is off of your face and on that hook and therefore it's allowing you to move a lot more freely and stop with those mask leaks. Now, the last thing I'll mention is to run a mask like leakage test on your machine, because if you have a ramp pressure set, so say you are ramping from a pressure of four to a 10, um, your mask might not leak at the level four, but it might start leaking later on. Uh, but at that point you're sleeping, right? So you wanna run a mask pressure test to see if there's any leaking. Uh, if you have a new mask, if you're changing pressures um, or, or just in general, you may like once a month to make sure everything's in, in good function. So to do that, let's tap the screen here and we're going to my options and then let's see your mask settings. No, we're not in here. More, there we go. So under more, we have mask fit and then we're gonna click mask fit and then you put your mask on and you start and it's gonna start blowing air. You can hear stop that and then it'll tell you if your mask is leaking or not and that is something that you can do to diagnose whether or not you need to replace your mask or any sort of part for that matter okay so i hope this video helped a little bit um, i know mask leaks can be kind of annoying kind of tricky to diagnose but i hope after using some of these tips here uh, it can help you sleep a little bit better if you want to find the most affordable sleep apnea equipment in canada visit our website thecpapstore.ca